Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to my sewing lair. Oh, I've had a wonderful week. I had some chit chat time with my girlfriends. We went away down to Gray's Point where my friend has a place and we had so much fun talking, drinking and eating and it was great to get away. But now I'm back into the real world, back to my Swedish death quilting and this is my most recently finished project. I have a few things that I'd like to share with you today about this project. Number one, this was my design for Good or Not, and I um, basically came about it uh, just experimenting with designing on my own, and I wasn't very far into quilting when I did this. And number two, to use some fabric up that I had, and number three, uh, to practice using uh, Deb Tucker's Rectangle Diamond Rex ruler, which I love. So I use both the Diamond Rex ruler for the diamonds and the rectangles, as well as I, 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 think, I, I think I just used the Tri-Rex tool for the Peaky and Spike or the V-Block or simply the triangle in a square. And the triangle in a square is simply the um, pieces that you see. Let me see if I can, there, there's the triangle and a square block there. And as you can see, it makes a really nice little star point. And then in the corner of each of these blocks, I just have half square triangles. So you can see, um, particularly on these, these blocks here, it produces a lot of lovely movement. And it, so you have nice movement in the center block and then around it you have nice movement as well. So I liked it and it was, you know, that was my first attempt at just kind of putting things together and uh, figuring things out and making some mistakes along the way, like because I'm directionally challenged. I uh, was putting this together and realized that I had one of my half square triangles was turning the wrong way. Not a good thing, not a good thing. But the learning was how do I keep that in a piece together quilt top and then take it out and reinsert it. So I guess that was the, the aha moment there that yes, you can do it. And it wasn't that big of a problem. The other thing um, I wished I had done and I didn't, I, it just didn't, I didn't notice it until I put the quilt together. I wished I had done another round robin around, just added another maybe four inches to, to get in another star point and to get um, a little bit more um, um, space to the outside of the diamonds. That's what I would have done differently. And, um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I think you should have those hindsight items. You know, until you do those types of, of, of missteps, if you will, you don't really learn. So I took it as a learning and I'm um, not ashamed about it. So anyway, um, here's the quilt. I'm so glad to get it off my board. One of the reasons that I had it uh, in my work in process pile. I had really done my quilt sandwich for a long time, but I had another idea about the quilting on it. And I decided I just didn't want to do it. And that idea was simply to do some really narrow straight line quilting in some of the areas, you know, basically quarter inch spacing. And I just decided I just didn't want to go through that hassle. And so it said I had about five rows in about 10 inches on this quilt. And I just basically had to unpick it. So unpicking was the, the thing that I um, wasn't so keen on doing. But I did unpick it. And then I chose an overall um, teardrop um, um, concentric three teardrop pattern which makes a great overall quilting pat pattern and I picked it up from Quilting with Jean. Jean is no longer with us but she has a wonderful YouTube channel and of course there's many great instructors on free motion quilting 
and hers is uh, definitely one of them. And I'll put a link and I hope that you'll check her out. But I saw one of her very quick videos and I said, oh, this uh, teardrop pattern would be really nice for me to do. The other thing about that uh, quilting is I did it on my, I did, this is the free motion quilting that I did on my Juki Kiri. And I'll have to say that um, the free motion piece of it has been a bit of a, uh, I don't want to say a disappointment, I'm going to say a challenge because I had to, you know, the machine just acted a little differently with the thread that I'm used to doing. And again, I know that that was tension and setup and all of those types of issues. But once I got it right, I had no problems. Before I was having tons of skip stitches and I had to, um, and this is with a needle that I typically use with the thread that I was using, and I just had to um, do a little bit of experimentation with it. But uh, once I got the setup correct, um, and remember, what can it be? It's going to be <laughs> your the you know pairing the right needle with the right thread and making sure that your top and bottom tensions are appropriate and the other thing to do that is i had to tweak i know they say never do this but in using the deco bob thread i, I did have to tweak um, the bobbin case tension um, a little bit and once i did that i was fine with it and I had to do that with both my Bernina as well as my 1946 Kenmore uh, to get um, the bob intention uh, correct with using something as fine as, which is uh, Deco Bob and 80 weight thread. Um, again, I know that they say that your bob intention should always stay the same, but I have not found that to, to, to be true for using very fine threads or for using very thick th th threads. So for example, if you're gonna put an 80 weight in your bobbin case for bobbin work, you're gonna to have to change the tension. There's not enough things that you can do with your top, uh, top tension to compensate for that. At least I'm not smart enough to figure that out. So this was my, um, this, this was my way of tinkering uh, up and below and getting to something that I was really happy with. So it's great to move this out of my unfinished projects. And I'll have to tell you that since I've gotten my Juki Kiri, I have been able to fly through, fly through projects because that 12 inches just makes it just so much easier to handle my quilt and get all that needful stuff done. It's just incredible the level of uh, confidence and comfort that I have in using um, this particular machine. And again, you do need to get used to your machine. So this was a great project for me to, um, to get very intimate with it pretty quickly on free motion quilting. So anyway, that's all I wanna share with you today. I appreciate your uh, stopping in and I hope you're working on something that brings you joy. Join me soon and see what's up on the design board next.